Hello everybody and welcome to another PMP end of month review. Well, what is this? Why, this is when we get together at the end of every month to review all the submissions to the PMP end of month review event. So every month we invite the participants in the PMP to submit uh, something into this event if they'd like for review. Has to be a finished project. Uh, they have to provide, nobody, you can't submit more than one. And it, you have to ask for targeted advice as to what you're looking for to take your next step on your hobby journey. So uh, we're going to get into this and look at everybody's submissions. There are a lot, as always, so we're going to be moving quickly. Um, at this point, this month, we're still going to do all of them. We'll see how that goes. Uh, as we go forward, these take a lot of time, but we'll see where we end up. Um, as, as I've said, we may need to get to a different thing eventually, but we'll get there. For now, we're going to review all of them. Uh, if you'd like to join us in your hobby journey, beyond just this event, of course, we have our normal Facebook group, and it's a wonderful group full of positivity, information exchange, and fantastic hobbyists. So whether you're just starting out or a master, we welcome you with open arms as long as you're looking to share and to celebrate the hobby. That's really the only requirements. Um, if you want to join, link is down below. Do please answer all of the questions that are on there. If you don't answer all three, you don't get in. So there you go. All right, with that being said, let's go right over here and take a look at uh, the submissions for this month. So first up, we've got Robert Cooper, who's looking for some advice on how to highlight better. Uh, he says it's his next big hurdle. Sure. So looking at it, um, Rob, it's, yeah, I mean, we, we are, we're pretty flat here. So, I mean, the when you're, it feels like you're probably starting out. One, this is like a really, really small thing. So you probably want to get some bigger miniatures, honestly. Um, to practice your, your volumetric highlighting on. But what you want to look up is volumetric highlighting, and it's pretty simple. This is the easiest way to think about it. Look at my arm right now. There are lights directly above me. This is brighter. This is darker. That's it. That's the whole, that's the whole shooting match right there. So when you're thinking about, like, a color green, this should be a brighter green. This should be a darker green, right? I mean, that's, that's the, the long and short of it. So as we're moving around the dragon, like the lower parts of his legs here and here and his arms, you know, these should be darker. Under his chin should be darker, that kind of stuff. We want to pick out these individual elements and make sure we're trapping those lights and shadows. The secret of miniature painting is really all about taking control of the light. And if you just look at other miniatures, uh, don't just look at them, see them. Especially, you know, go to like Putty and Paint or something and look at the way they express the volumes and you'll get an idea of like, how those are being trapped so that's my best advice uh okay next up we've got marco uh he says he put all his skills and knowledge into this piece but he'd like to improve uh, if this was a competition area which areas would require uh, work and attention sure so uh marco this is a really nice piece um i like it a lot um the necron on the base is probably a little lacking because he's just kind of like this flat silver thing so always be careful when you include basing elements that aren't up to the standard of the miniature. I would say the same for the rock. Like the rock, I do love the red dust worked in, but the rock itself is still a little bit just kind of like washed and dry brushed kind of feel. Now, when I look around, the it's got some nice battle damage. I think that's well executed. Your volumetric highlighting is is nice. We need to go a little, if, that, if this is meant to be non-metallic gold, we're not going dark enough nor bright enough. So that's not really selling to me. Like... I don't have enough number one, so as always, I'm going to talk about highlights as one, two, three, four, five, one being the brightest, five being the darkest, three being your mid-tone, so there's not enough one here. Um, we also don't go dark enough. We basically stop at three and a half, and we never go darker. Um, you'd want to smooth out these blends, that kind of thing. Uh, if we're looking at the metals, like this metal part here, this is actually rather flat, so you want to make sure you take control of the light with your basic metals. Like I can see the little highlight down here, but then we didn't smooth that out. So make sure we get those, get control of those lights in, in places like that. Um, I like the texturing on the cloak. I think that looks really nice. Um, you want to smooth this out some. It's still, it like, you jumped from too light to too dark too quick. It's also brown, which just isn't really how white cloth actually gets. Like, okay, I'm wearing a white shirt. Is any part of that shadow brown? No. Um, it's blue because bright white highlights have cold shadows, like warm highlights have cold shadows. So um, in this case, you're using a warm white, so you'd want to drift more into like a gray tone to, to, to show a, a dark color, right? Um, 
but yeah, I mean, overall, the only other thing that jumped out at me was the lightning needs to be more thin, more precise. It's really hard to do power sword lightning. It's something I struggle with as well all the time. So I, I'm not, look, I get it. It's a real pain. You've got to get the sharpest, sharpest brush you can. You've got to get your paint mixed with some ink for some flow improver or something. And you've got to really get in there and just get these like hyper thin, sharp lines. Um, so that's the stuff that jumps out at me. I hope that helps to give you some things to think about there, Marco. But it's a very cool piece. I really like the color scheme. Very, um, sort of a very naturalistic military green. I don't know what chapter this is, but it looks really cool. All right, next up, Keys, uh, bringing us some shining spears. Uh, tried to pay attention to creating sh significant contrast or sufficient contrast. Um, did it succeed? Does the true metallic metal work? Uh, let's take a look. So, um... When it comes to the bikes themselves, I think they look nice. Uh, does the contrast on the metal work? So we need to really get in on one of these guys. And I think that, um, let me go back out to exactly how I phrased this question. Sufficient contrast and does the TMM work? Okay, so I think that we still need to keep pushing the contrast. The bikes feel better, but that's largely because they have this big pattern than the riders. The hair in the pink feels good. The turquoise or teal feels flat still, as does the metallic. Now, as to drawing more attention to the face, I mean, that's gonna be really hard on a model like this where everything is a riot of bright exploding colors. I honestly don't think it's much of a problem uh, given what these things are and that they're gaming pieces. I, I think you're honestly fine. Um, same thing with the lightning that I said last time. Again, just as with the last piece, it needs to be thinner. It needs to be more controlled uh to if you're gonna if you're gonna sell that effect so i do think keep pushing on the contrast uh you know the gems are really working for me so those i do like and the patterning and stuff like that really does look great so you know wh whatever you laid down that with that that came out really well so well done there okay next up caspian um egyptian war clerics uh painting non-traditional swords is a real hassle advice and that would be helpful sure so yeah, we've got like unusual sword shapes here. And when it comes to this, the key is to pick, like we'll just take this one for example. The key is to pick, you know, some edges and then start creating alternations of light and dark. When you've got a blade like this, one of the things you can do is just sort of cheat. What I mean by that is you can have this area here be light against the most dark that travels the flat of this area here. And then this area gets somewhat lighter again. And then you've got another bright spot down here in the middle meant to be a reflecting light bouncing back up. Uh, like maybe in this area down here and then this bottom part is very dark. And then in the middle part, you make the blade itself dark and you make this the brighter section of the middle one. Kind of gives you a nice, easy, you know, alternating two by one highlight situation. Um, so, you know, there's like, it's, you just need to find your edges, draw them out. I mean, these figs don't look super sharp like well-defined, precise lines. So that can be really tough because you have to really create it yourself. But that's kind of the way I would go about it. Just find some shapes in there and start creating the alternations between light and dark. That's my best advice. Okay, next up, Kurt. Uh, wondering how to balance the blends uh, and shadows without looking to Dark Angel. Also, any other tips on how to improve my true metallic metal? Um, sure, so... With salamanders, they're an interesting challenge because, yes, you do want to stay within a certain tone. Um, the answer is you want to push up higher into yellow greens for your highlights um, as you're doing on things like the feet. And then you get very soft and you bring in more of a black instead of a deep green for your shadows or like a black blue. Create naturalistic shadows on the green through something like a Payne's Gray or a Dark Sea Blue or whatever, deep blue. Like there's a, a ton of different dark blue-black colors around. So something like that. Um, and that will give you more naturalistic shadows, but you rely more on, you have more one, two, and three, and you minimally use your four and five, but you just use it to create the volumes. Um, I think the most successful part of this to me is the feet. I think you actually did those really well, like this area down here. I know that it's kind of just a little thing, but I actually think these are executed exactly right. Like you've got nice darks defining everything. You go, you pop up to a high enough highlight. It would just be a matter of carrying this kind of a concept out to the rest of the figure more equally rather than just on kind of the edges. Now, as to the true metallic metal, yes, I do think we need to go farther with it. Um, you know, it's it can be tough uh, with stuff like the shapes that are here. But my best advice is with things like the gun. These are good opportunities to, like, 
bring shadows right up top here to create then a highlight on top, you know, highlight to shadow to light. Again, it's all about creating contrast, alternation, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. When you have these kinds of uh, leg pieces where the it's got this um, metal edge around it, you know, up top here should be quite dark. It's, it's quite protected with maybe a small light in the center to capture a reflecting light. Down here should be very bright, you know, just start creating alternating patterns of light and dark, like I said in the previous piece. So, hope that helps. All right, next up, uh, Long, can I ask about my placement of highlight and shadow in my current whip? So, again, I appreciate it. There's a couple people this month that did work in progress. Don't do work in progress. This is for finished stuff. You have to finish the project to submit here. That being said, since it's your first time you've done it, I'll, I'll give it to you and I'll give you some advice. Um, but in general, finished only. You gotta finish the piece to get here. Must be finished, okay? All right. Now, as to your placement of highlight and shadow, um, I think it's fine. Uh, I think that you need to pop up, like where we're falling down here is on, and it, like the problem is it's very hard for me to judge where you are. When it's work in progress, I don't know how far you are, how far you intended to go, all that kind of stuff. Now, that being said, um, we need to take more high highlights up to the top area here. So especially on the, the tops of his, the, the shoulders and these kinds of areas, this should be much brighter. Now, if we're just talking about the highlights on the cloak and kind of how those work out, um, yes, but I need more, like you vary the, the purple blue here, but we don't vary the red at all. So if we're going to do this, we've got to carry some shadows down and carry some shadows down and have this like naturally extend and create. You can do these color transitions, but the shadows and the lights have to extend as well. So there you go. Hope that helps. Uh, okay, Mark, uh, working on the glow effect from the plasma coils. Think it needs to extend farther, have some glow on the shoulders and backpack. Yeah, so, you know, I looked at this earlier, and I do think it's a little too bright on the face. I think you might need a little up on the backpack, like right here. I do agree with you. And I tone it down a little bit on the face, like have this normal color come in a little, little bit more. <laughs> but honestly, I think it works. Um, you know, I was looking at this and I thought, yeah, that pretty much works. Um, it actually works best in this photo. And I was trying to figure out why. And I realized it's because you're not taking this picture in good, even lighting. You're taking it in bad lighting. Okay. So I, we're going to talk about photos in the future. There's some other ones coming up here that we got to talk about photos with. But, um, in this one, since you have this strong directional light coming in from this side, it's making this area reflect. Okay. And when I looked at it from a distance, I was like, oh yeah, there's light here and there's light here, right? And it looked right. And then I went to the next photo, oops, sorry, I went to the next photo where it was turned away from the light and it looked too dark, okay? So sometimes you can do stuff like this, like just make it shine a natural light at your miniature in that direction and you can kind of get an idea. Um, the other thing you can do is the first thing you want to do is you want to define the outer edge. Like if this is the glow, what circle is it casting? Right? And then you just literally hold the miniature like that and back and forth and you look at like what areas, if this is where my globe of light sits, what am I touching? So yeah, I'd push it up a little more into those areas. But overall, I think it's it's quite successful in the face. It really feels like, yeah, that's a good glow. And it's green on green, which wouldn't normally work, but I think you actually did a really good job of it here. So well done. Okay, next up, James Lynch, uh, who I met down at CanCon, has a beautiful Slanesh army. Um, looking for feedback specifically on the cloth and clothing. How do you take it to the next level? Um, other feedback also encouraged. So as I told you, James, in person, I think your non-metallic metal, your gold doesn't have enough one and probably a little bit of two. Needs to be brighter, needs to pop more, needs more edges, needs a little more ivory with some white glints or something like that. That was the one thing I noticed there. That's my general feedback. Now, let's talk cloth. Um, I think your cloth looks really nice. I think you have the right amount of highlights in there. I think it has a good variation like i had the good fortune of seeing these pieces up close so i did get a chance to look at most of the slanesh army you know hold it touch it you know be inches away from him i think there's a couple places where you could add a little bit more five a little bit deeper shadows but honestly my answer is if you're just going for like cloth just straight up cloth that's fine where you would go if you wanted to take it up a level would be things like either texture or freehand or both right so working in brocade patterns and things like that into the design or working in texture, silk texture, you know, so lots, you know, thousands and thousands of tiny little hashes, little slashes um, on highlights and stuff like that, which I've got a couple of videos on. That would be the way you could sort of take it 
and escalate it way up to the next level. But, you know, that being said, depends on... It, it's clear you spent a ton of time on this army already, and it looks gorgeous. Um, you know, I I know you top three. You might have gotten first place in the AOS thing, so you're clearly doing very well uh, when you get first place out of five or... No, it's not like... I mean, 200 and some people? Yeah, pretty good. So, but it's great to, great to hear from you, James. I hope everything is well done in Australia. And I hope to see you again in 2022 when CanCon comes back. Uh, I can't wait to see what you got by then. Okay, uh, Mikhail, uh, one of his recent works tried to put everything you know into them, but they feel like they lack something. Sure. Uh, what should you take as the next step? Yeah, so, I mean, the answer here is going to really be contrast, okay? So, uh, you know, when I was looking over these guys, they're, they're very nice. I like the patterning and stuff. I think all that looks nice. I think the, the glow on her eyes is a little too strong. You want to weaken that a little bit. It really looks like, like it just, we can get to the, yeah, the leader shot here. It's, you've got a little too much of intense blue right here. It, that needs to soften out. Like that's, it's reflecting way too intensely. Um, but when we're talking about next level, it's mainly on the contrast. So when you do the patterns and stuff like we are here or, you know, things like that, when you've got things like bone, when you've got things like wood, when you've got things like the flesh, none of these have enough contrast. All of these need to go farther. So more tonal variation of value. That's going to be the thing you want to you want to work on there, uh, Miguel. They look great. They're a really nice looking warband. If you're going to do another one, my best advice is keep pushing yourself like this. I think you're doing great. Now you know work on adding in more uh, variation of value. So more tonal variation. Okay, more contrast. Hope that helps. All right, next up, Paul Allen. Uh, most recent completion was striving for realism on the griff, drawing inspiration from kestrels. Struggled to get the cat metallics looking true, so decided to focus on the bold colors, contrast, and glazing. Um, sure. Um, does the base... So, and then his final question was, does the base work? So, my answer is not really. Yeah, I like the basic components of it, yes, but the stone feels too just like flat. Let's go back to that one, sorry. The stone feels just like stone. So this is stone with plants literally growing out of it, and yet it's gray and white stone. Cardinal sin there. Uh, this is a mortal sin of miniature painting. Uh, stone is not flat gray, especially not ruins. That's something that's been sitting out in nature for months, years, decades, centuries, being this broken down. It has plants growing on it. It should have greens. It should have browns. It should have reds. It should have mud on it. It should have, you know, like that kind of thing. That's what makes something feel old and ruined. Uh, now, as to the bird, yeah, bird works for me. I think bird looks good. Um, like the kestrel colors, like the gray and white, feels naturalistic. He did a good job. His face is, like, really eye-catching, which is what you want. Um, so all that works for me. I, I don't have any issue with that at all. I think the bird looks fantastic. Um, the medals on the guy are, uh, on the on the cast and his armor, are very, very bright. I think we do need to take some control of the light there by having, you know, we need to get some control with some inks and really glaze in some shadows or something like that, right? Really take control of that light. Um, there's some areas on this that are more successful than others, like this little lightning area here. His little staff, I think, feels better than some of the other areas. So I think just work on what you're doing with your contrast and your true metallic metals and push yourself there, and that would be my best advice for you. Uh, but yeah, overall, cool piece. Uh, I like it. Okay, uh, next up, Duarte. Um, what makes for a more attractive photo, the dark rim photos or the white background? Um, I like black backgrounds, so, I mean, it's, but in the end, it's up to you. Um, overall color composition and do the wings seem detached from the rest of the model? If so, any suggestion on how to uh, correct it? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, the wings are fairly neutral colored. They are very detached. Um, I mean, we've got to talk about lighting here, buddy. Like, the black, the, the problem is if you're going to do a black background, you have to have, like, this is way too direct of lighting and way too much shadow. So let's go to this one because this is, like, you have a much more even lighting setup here. If you're going to do a black background, you have to flood the area with light, diffuse, non-targeted light. Now, okay, so let's talk about this. Um, yes, the wings are, are very different than everything else, but I'm not sure that actually matters because they're so neutral toned. I mean, your color composition-wise here, I think you're fine. But you're not really using a lot of colors. Um, you know, my biggest challenge is I have with... I mean, this is a mostly neutral piece or, or very desaturated, right? You don't really have any colors that pop except for your your candle flames. Um, and the candle flames are, are one of my biggest challenges with it. It feels too 
there like we don't ferrari red is not part of a candle flame it needs to be a small amount of white yellow little bit of ochre mostly uh, a deep orange and then into a little bit of a whole red or deep red black brown at the top that's candle flame color there's no ferrari red in candle flames um the um Though I think my main challenge is not composition. I think composition-wise, you're you're fine. I think you're in a good enough place. We need more contrast across most everything. Like the black is too flat. The skin of the 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 arms and the face of the the um, the character himself are are way way too flat. We definitely need color there. And then the bone that construes the the mount is again too flat. It needs more contrast. So we're way too much in the mid tones. So I think my, I, compositionally you're fine, and now we just need to push the contrast. So there you go, hope that helps. Okay, next up, Juniper. Uh, finished his vampire after having multiple varnish mishaps and finally su uh, success in AK Ultramat. Sure, I mean, I still trust AK Ultramat. That, that company made me very angry and it was a bunch of nonsense of what they did, but you know, they still make a really good product. It's, it's, it is what it is, I don't know. I, I can say I probably won't support them for anything else but that. Um, I'm mostly looking for feedback on the red armor. I aimed for it to be fairly desaturated and the TMM where I tried to use some non-metallic techniques for shading with inks. Yeah, sure. So I think, uh, so this is, you have bad pictures. <laughs> I'm just going to say that straight out, Juniper. This is a very cool conversion. I really love this idea, this conversion you did, taking this um, Stormcast character and turning into this Vampire Lord. This is a cool idea. I like the red armor. I think it looks really nice. I actually think the red armor is very successful. Um, it probably needs a little bit more contrast, mainly through shadow. So you need more fours and fives. But the color tone of it is nice. It's great. It's a desaturated red. It doesn't smack you in the face. It feels like a like an old worn vampire armor. So I actually think that's really successful. These photos are bad. Okay. I don't like if you can see a shadow like this. You have too direct of lighting. You should be, like, you should not see a shadow coming off of a miniature in any way. If you can, your lighting is too direct. It needs to be diffuse. You can diffuse lighting by literally taking a piece of, you know, A4 paper or whatever and putting it in front of the light. Okay? So, something like that. Now, that being said, I'll do my best with uh, our, our, our lighting conditions here. And the, the challenge with doing it in poor lighting is it's not really going to let me evaluate your true metallic. Like, I can't see anything in the top there. And this is overblown, right? Too much light, not enough light. Um, I think the red is successful. My general impression, and I could be completely wrong, uh, given what's going on, is that you're aiming the right direction with the metallics. We just need to push it a little bit more with the glazing and kind of smooth things out. That's what jumped out at me. But overall, I think the red is an absolute success. Um, again, maybe push a little more shadows. You can kind of see it in the black and white where a lot of it is in that two gray spectrum. But the metallics, yeah, I, it's a little hard to tell because there the blade kind of looks all white. There maybe you've got some color, but it's out of focus. So it's just, it's kind of hard for me to tell, man. I apologize. So indirect lighting. I got to beat a couple people up for photos this month. Okay. Jacob. Uh, all right. Audi, finish the first of my many gets for tabletop standard as I want my army ready to decent pace. Mainly want feedback on is the robe and the hood. Uh, still new to painting, so there's a lot I can learn. Hey, I love that attitude. Um, it's very tough to tell. Again, we have very direct lighting in a very small photo. So, uh, I mean, if you're going for tabletop, I think it's fine. I like the little red hood, little red cap with the little white dots. The robe itself seems fine. Goblin robes are the least important part of the whole thing. So if they're pretty, they seem pretty stock standard. Um, when you got 60 of them together, what, what you can see is like weapon tips and hats and long noses. I like the addition of the pink to the nose. So yeah, I mean, I think you've got a good tabletop standard. If you're looking for something speedy, seems good to me. So that's what I'll say. Okay. Uh, Lucas, hello Vincent. Thanks for the offer. Uh, first large mini. I'd love to hear one to two things you liked and one to two things you didn't like. Sure. Okay. Um, as well as how to make the face more of a focal point. So, yeah, let's take a look. Um, things that I really quite like about this are, um, overall, I think the colors used are really interesting, even though you've used a lot of different colors. Like, we honestly have purple, green, yellow, blue, and orange on this piece. 
Uh, so that's quite a riot of colors with some red on the base. So we're just spinning that whole color wheel. Um, yet I feel like they're fairly in balance. Like at most of the viewing angles, I honestly feel like it's it's pretty in balance. Um, so I, I enjoy that compositionally. Um, I think that the gold, I like. It needs to come to a slightly higher highlight, but I like the texturing and the way you painted it. I feel like that sells for me. I'm a buyer on that, okay? Now, the green scales feel like they need something a little more, especially on things like the feet, uh, especially as the feet transition into the toenails and the hands into the hand nails. Those feel very flat. His face has a little, does a little better, but again, like the green doesn't really transition into the purple super smoothly. That's kind of where I feel like it's falling down. The armor, the cloth, all of that sells to me. The scales feel like they need a little bit more variation, a little bit more smoothness and contrast. The other thing that I don't love is the sword, which is ironic because you did a beautiful job glazing it, but it just doesn't go far enough for me. Um, it's really in like two, three. Like that's all you did. Uh, you didn't push up to one. You didn't push down to four or five. So I feel like some more contrast on the sword. It doesn't have to be completely even. You don't have to, it doesn't have to go like, you know, in this complete even pattern. That's another, like, watch out for that. You have like one, two, one, two, and they're very exactly balanced and in the same length all the way and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I feel like we needed more dark shadows in here. There's nothing, this guy feels like he's in a dark swampy environment and yet there's no shadows reflecting off of this. He's getting just like, the sword would be flooded with light from all directions to be reflecting that brightly. So it just doesn't feel like, up here on the hilt, it feels like we got down dark enough, but we didn't anywhere on the blade. So there you go. Uh, now, as to the face being a focal point, I mean, doing what I talked about with more contrast, more smoothness, pop the purple in the nose up, have the eyes be more of a defined color, that kind of thing, I think would, would draw more attention to the face. So there you go. Hope that helps, Lucas. All right, next up, uh, Fabian, custom Nurgle Demon Prince, looking for some general feedback, uh, but also on the wings, are they too boring? Um, yes, easy answer. I mean, if you, let me, so here's the thing I always say. If you had the wherewithal to ask the question, you asked the question because in your mind, you knew the answer. So you're either, you know the answer and you're looking for me to absolve you, okay? I am not. If you had it in your head, listen to the voice. You don't need me. You have your own inner painter inside of you. And when they tell you, mm, does that feel right? We've all had that moment. Listen to that voice, okay? So yes, the wings are flat. They need more, they need more contrast. Um, I have multiple videos on doing wings, so I would recommend looking into those. Now, as to general feedback, the problem with the, the body itself is, again, it's all very flat. Like, it's from a distance, this guy just looks like sort of a study in yellow-brown, maybe going into a little bit of red. We need more separation of elements, like more colors glazed in. Like, if he's all meant to be one thing, that's fine, then we need to have, like, colors. If he's meant to be Nurgle, then give me some green, some purples, glaze in something, give me more shapes, give me more variation of hue here and use that to define your volumes right a lot of things here are just too flat and too lacking in contrast so that's going to be my main feedback and advice for you cool conversion though uh i don't know what this is from but man is this a creative original thing like this is super neat so yeah it's like a super cool idea i dig the heck out of it i have no idea what you built this from but it is a very unique interesting figure all right uh adrian uh first uh post hey welcome glad to have you uh try to improve something every time one thing that that bothers me still is gloss varnish you can't see on this photo well but when i varnish models this makes them somehow dull even if i use gloss i've tried many brands and it ends up like this every time i paint metallics using alclad 2 paints that are very shiny and it's always disappointing when they end up after varnishing okay so these guys look really nice um here's my best advice for you adrian please for the love of all that is holy stop varnishing your metallics you don't need to even with gaming pieces. This is just this thing that's out there. Plastic miniatures are tough. Metal paints are tough. You know what I mean? Like, unless you literally grab your miniatures and rub them like this, okay? Or you have some plan to really, really get them into a position where they're going to get worn and torn. I do not varnish my my metal, like when I have metallics, I varnish in the middle with all my mats. I paint all my matte colors first, then I varnish and I paint all my metallics. 
I've never had a scratch and I play with my armies, you know, every weekend and take them to five tournaments a year. So, uh, that is my first advice. Alclad 2 is a beautiful metal paint. And you can tell here, these guys really pop. Um, my biggest advice for you, from what I can see, this is a very zoomed out photo. I mean, they look really nice. Love the colors, love the execution. Swords look wonderful. Beautiful variation on the swords, by the way. Beautiful. Um, that really sells for me. Um, I'd push up the contrast a little bit more on the shoulder pads. You have wonderful contrast in the metallics. That really sells. Of course, those should be the things that pop the most. I would work on the contrast on my blues a little more, bring that up a little bit, give us a little more action there. I think that's really the number one thing that jumps out at me. But hopefully with the varnish trick, you know, and if, you, if you're the type of person that you do the alclads and then you do the matte paints last, just don't varnish these guys. I promise they'll be fine. Um, you don't need to worry about it. Do not varnish metallics. It's just going to ruin them. Okay. Uh, Patrick, uh, painting figures for a little over a year now. Uh, 54 uh, mil Norman Warrior. I uh, would like to get some feedback on shading and the flag because it doesn't give me that feeling it's made of fabric. Um, sure. And then as well, some general feedback. So a couple of thoughts here. One, we definitely, I mean, the same thing I've said many times, we need to up the contrast a lot more. So uh, he, he is a very flat figure. When you're painting in the scale, 54 mil, you have a lot more space, which means two things. Contrast of value needs to get upped and contrast of texture. So there's sometimes where we say that, oh, when you paint larger, you don't need to worry about contrast as much because the light will do it for you. I don't believe that. Um, you have to take the lighting into account to make it look realistic. Um, you have to create the lighting situation and bigger figures allow you to do that. So for example, his steel is just all one flat color on his, his chain shirt here, right? Um, so like I need shading that is in here and light reflections up here and stuff like that. Same with the shield, same with the pants, same with the jerkin, same with all of that. Now, the other thing, and what would answer your flag question is you need variation of texture. Okay. So as you go up into 54 and 75 millimeter, you have the ability to add texture because you can see it. Like it would get to a scale where you can now see texture more clearly. So what that means is things like hashes, stippling, dots, scratches, wear, tear, and like on things like the leather and the jerkin and the wood and the sword scabbard and the shield and the flag, we need to see those textures in there. And that's what'll make it feel like cloth. Um, but at the same time, the first one where you have more naturalistic shadows and, and highlights created, if you then add in the texture as well, that's what's gonna do it for you. Now, that's a lot of stuff if you're only a year in, okay? So I don't wanna hit you with too much. My main advice would actually be to focus more on contrast first. Get your contrast down, understand your volume, volumetric highlighting, understand your lights and shadows, and then work your way to textures eventually, okay? So hopefully that helps. All right, next up, Jake, uh, bringing us another Luna Wolf. We talked, we saw some of these last month. Uh, two things you did well and two things you still need to work on. This might be a format that we just go to. Uh, it might be, it might actually be like a one thing you did well and one thing, because that'll really let me, you know, discuss. So, but we'll see. For now, we'll stick to two. Um, yeah, so things I think you did well. Uh, love the, the, um, Love what you've done, taking into account things like the dusting and the and the weathering, the sort of powder. <laughs> oh my goodness, excuse me. I hope that wasn't too loud. Um, so I think that really sells. Um, we've, and I know that, you know, part of what you said with last month was you were going for, you know, something tabletop. This needs to be replicatable. You're not looking to take this to an ultra high level. Got it? So that's how my advice will be structured. Um, the... Um, I think the battle damage looks nice. I think that's, you know, you break them up a little bit more in variation. So one of the things human brains do is they want to make everything the same size. Every one of your chips is the same size. And every one of your scratches is the same length. Now, I know they're not exactly the same length in millimeters, but they are. That is the same size as 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 that for all practical purposes. Like you're varying like this, right? This is your variance. That's not variance. If you're going to do scratches, one needs to be like that, and most need to be like this, and then you got one like that. That's variance, right? So you should have one, like, going the whole length of his leg, and then a couple little ones, and then, you know, that kind of thing, right? You also need to make sure your dots and your chips are of different sizes. So I like it. I like your coloration. I think that looks good. I like your random patterning. The general patterning is good. We just need to vary the size and application, okay? It's a hard thing to do because your brain why likes regularity. It wants to do the same thing. However, that isn't what we can do, okay? 
So, um, now on to the other thing I like is I like where you're going with the axe. I think that actually looks really cool with the sort of fire coming down. Um, you know, again, if it were, if you're going for a higher sort of, you know, end stuff, I'd say eventually, you know, you could smooth out your blends, but honestly, I like the execution on it again for something fast and more tabletop focused to capture some light like that and a little flamey piece. I dig it. I think that's really cool. Makes that dude stand aside or stand apart. I think it's good. All right, next up, Dave, uh, 20 year old dragon ogre. Uh, it's a Shagoth actually, but yeah, well, I guess Shagoths are dragon ogres, but whatever. I know the kit well. I've got a couple of them. I love them. Um, kit bash some tiered wings on, which by the way, looked great. I, we haven't, I looked at this earlier. I absolutely love this conversion. This is gorgeous, man. You made these fit together so well. I, I mean, these, it feels like this was the kit. You, everybody's going to see what I get into this. Uh, first time using snow, which don't think quite pulled off. Uh, sure. Uh, this was a turning point in your skill push. Feedback's most appreciated. Yeah, this looks really great. As I said, the conversion alone is absolutely wonderful. I really, really enjoyed um, this conversion. Like, you really nailed it. You knocked it out of the park with integrating these two pieces together. It feels like this should be the kit. <laughs> like, really legit. Um, so, yeah, well done on that. Now, um, you know, as to the stuff, I like your contrast of value on the skin. Where we're missing is the variation of hue, so color, in the shadows. We have our one, two, three, really nice, but we never really go to a four and five on the muscle structure, on the volumes. We never integrate the reds, the maroons, the crimsons, the purples that we would want to see into that flesh to make it feel alive. So we want to keep pushing the color like that. That's the number one thing that jumped out at me, that if I was going to tell you what to work on next, it would be that. If you want a second small thing, it's be careful with large, big shapes like the wings that feel very airbrushed. Um, you want to still go in and make sure that you are picking out individual areas, creating some naturalized texture on big things like these wings, you know, which, like I said, I mean, I can, I, I know you use the airbrush on them because I can see the their effects of the airbrush, which is fine. But you want more variation here. These are all just like the same. It's all just the same. You know, so either use the airbrush more to your your uh, uh, more to your advantage by bringing in some glazes of other colors near like the bone pieces, or go in and actually highlight out the little bones that are in, that are in between the wings, or take so your paintbrush and make some long stipple lines and then glaze over those. I mean, like you can do a hundred things, right? But the point is, is that you want to be doing something like that to create more visual interest in those. Okay. Now, as to the snow, yeah, it doesn't quite work. It's a little too clumpy. Um, I have a couple of realistic snow videos. My advice would be go watch those. I think the one you want is like, uh, I don't know when I return to it. 92 or in the 90s maybe is when I return to it. So check around somewhere in there. Hobby cheating 90 something. Craig Lewis did a lot of new stuff like sculpting obsidian like blade and having this marble look on this Marathi. Looking to improve more in every aspect. Uh, sure. Uh, that's not quite as targeted as I would like, but I'll, I'll see what I can do for you. Okay, so the number one thing is when you have that, that jumped out at me was the conversion works, like good integration of the wings. I think that works fine. And you manage to, to blend in the, the pieces rather well, so and make it feel like a naturalistic transition. So that sells for me. Um, the number one thing I actually noticed was up on Marathi. In this area where we want to be paying attention, right? First of all, I wouldn't do this with this blood effect. It's just kind of too far. Like, if you want a couple little dribbles coming out of her mouth, that's fine. But, like, having it run out like that everywhere, it just really covers the fig in a, in a negative way, to be honest. I mean, I know we're like, yay, blood, and it's super cool. It, you, It's just not as impactful. It just makes her look messy. Now, the thing that jumped out at me was contrast, okay? So, the wing effect is fine. Um, it's kind of a... It's, it is what it is. I would still pick out the feathers, like, you need to go in and actually make something happen with the texture on those feathers. But the contrast here that needs a lot more attention is in her skin, in her outfit, and in her headdress, right? Like, her headdress is just basically gold. Her skin is just basically this color, and her outfit is black with a little bit of purple. So, more contrast, more volumetric highlighting is really what we need to see. I think the conversion is really cool, um, so I think that looks nice. We just need to make sure that we, we're still pushing that contrast up. So if I was going to tell you one thing to work on, Craig, it would be push that contrast. So with her skin, integrate those soft pinks, those crimsons, those magentas, those even soft purples 
on the gold. Bring in, give me some chestnut tones, some light purples, some shadows. Push me up to the silver for the highlights. Create, take control of the light and really, you know, really grab it, okay? On the, on the dress itself, show me some deep blacks, show me some purple, you know, into into a sort of lilac highlights or something like that. They're very soft or very small volumes, just something like that. So there you go, Craig. Hope that helps. Okay, next up, Alberto. Hi, Vince. I've tried to apply your previous advice, and I would appreciate any improvement that you can suggest for this one. Yeah, so uh, it's good. There are two main things that jump out at me. This is really nice, good, clean fig. Looks really nice. Um, it's an interesting figure. Uh, number one is what I've been talking about already. We need more tonal variation in the skin, more variation of hue, and a little bit of contrast. So again, we're getting there. This is better. We're going the right direction. We need to keep pushing it, integrating more tones. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of cool larger scale female orcs around that you can Google, uh, even more male orcs um, that you can look at and see how they've integrated different hues and contrast into that skin. There's a lot you can do there. Bringing in additional green tones, red tones, deep purples, deep reds mixed with deep greens to get a nice, subtle, realistic, desaturated brown. Lots and lots of options. So that kind of stuff. The other thing that jumps out, man, this is the hair. The hair is a real opportunity we're passing by. Um, we need to get that into, uh, you know, more naturalistic highlights. Uh, so again, like I always talk about, if you want to understand how to do um, highlights, just go Google pictures of hair dye boxes like Vidal Sassoon hair dye boxes and look at how they light the, the woman's hair in there because it's always photoshopped. It's perfect lighting, like it's perfect lighting in the studio. And then they correct it with a computer to be the absolute perfect highlights. So it'll show you exactly the halo of light, the ring, and exactly how it's created. And I think that's where our opportunity is to to improve there, okay? To create more variation in that hair. Because that's kind of a, it's a big piece, big part of her face. We want to make sure we're catching that out. All right, next up, uh, Nako, uh, tried his best. Also try not to use any white. Instead, all the highlights are done with Rakar flesh and the sword, just yellow. Uh, love it, love it. Okay. So, um, I feel like we could have, on the non-metallic gold, we should have integrated more into a pure Rakarth flesh. We're not going high enough on that. And pure Rakarth flesh would be enough to give us a bright highlight. So we need, we need to push a little bit more there in some places. Um, sword works. Although, in general, I would avoid making the tip the hottest part. This is just like a classic sort of thing I see a lot where people just take it up in one direction. This is always more boring. Have the hot part be in the middle and the edges and have the tip be black and the bottom be black and this be hot, it will look, you will be amazed how much better it will look simply by literally moving it down. This is the easiest trick of the eye. Instead of going one direction, make the eye move two directions as we go toward the highlight and it will blow you away how different the feeling is, okay? Uh, now, other than that, I like the blue armor. I think that's well executed on. We do need to pop up the highlights on things like the backpack, and the very top parts, the shoulders, the highest parts of the overall volume of the miniature. Uh, it needs to come up a little higher. Uh, as well, we probably need to glaze in a little bit more shadows. But overall, I really like the execution on some of the, on, on the gold, other than the shield, I think, which you've got some parts that really stand out really nicely, especially the iron halo and the pieces on his backpack. I think that looks good. The soft scratching on the leather, I think, looks really nice. Um, the, the bottom of the cloak, by the way, looks absolutely wonderful with the red you've worked up in there, stuff like that. That, that I'm a buyer on. I'm a, I'm a buyer on that 100%. So, uh, yeah, really good stuff, Greg. Uh, there you go. Hope that all helps. Okay, next up, Matthew. I'm looking for advice on how to improve corroded, rusted, non-metallic metal. So, okay, Matthew, here's my honest advice. Um, here's my simple answer. Don't. <laughs> I know it sounds like a jerk thing to say. But here's why I say it. You have to master non-metallic metal and really understand how volumes work and lighting works and really have convincing NMM. And then you can start working on polluting that with other things. Okay? It's a really complicated technique. It's not an easy thing to do. All right? So, like, but that being said, if you don't mind failure and, and challenging yourself and continue learning, then okay. So the way you integrate corrosion into non-metallic metal is by placing it in the shadows. It's effectively a trick of secondary lighting. You use corrosion in place of secondary highlights in NMM. So you should have your high highlight, your two, your three, your four, your five, and then you come back to, to four, three, two, 
But instead of climbing back up into your highlight colors, you climb through browns into brighter brown and then into orange. And this has the advantage of usually being placed where the light isn't striking because the light would be reflecting where it's still brightest. So it feels naturalistic. Now, why those areas that aren't being reflected upon or happen to be the areas of highest rust is usually a bit of a uh, an, arti an artistic license. Now, that being said, when you've got things like pits and rust, those are good chances to break it up. Don't make them also universally orange like you did here. You want some that are just brown. You want some that are running out. Um, so you still want those high highlights, but you've got to shrink the volumes way down on the reflections, okay? And you want interruptions of them, scratches, things like that, things that make it look worn, places where suddenly, you know, rust creeps in or something. So it's this really careful balancing act you have to walk. Um, there's probably a video in this at some point in time doing non-metallic metal corroded weapons. That's a very specific thing, but I know exactly, and it's, it is very challenging, but I hope that advice helps you out. All right, next up, Mark, uh, part of a larger collection of models from a Warcry Warband, but um, uh, tried a few different things here. Tattoos are something he's never done. Uh, can't help but feel there's room for improvement. Another aspect you're struggling with is how to make the sculpted furs look really good. So in here, I'm just going to probably direct you to two videos, Mark. So the tattoos look nice. You need to sharpen them up. So I direct you to my Sharp Thin Lines video, as well as my tattoo video, which is in the 60s or something. Watch both of those. Because in the tattoo video, you'll see that one of the keys to integrating them is one, go a little bit darker, more into the black on this, and two, make sure you have the flesh tone glazed over the top so they feel integrated into the skin. They need to be sharp, they need to be strong, and then they need to be glazed to be softened. But They have to start strong. Now, as to the fur, again, so I have a couple different videos on painting fur um, and how to make those look realistic. I would direct you to the most recent fur video. I couldn't tell you what number it's in, but these war cry models and these chaos models really fit that style of fur very well. It's a technique that's very hard to explain, but it has to do with making fur clumps and patches and then highlighting and crisscrossing them. And that's a very naturalistic pattern looking way that if you've looked at like my recent Chaos Warriors or Chaos Knight that I've done, they all use that technique. So I would direct you back to that video and that will put you on the right direction, okay? So hopefully those two things help. All right, uh, next up, Kyle. Uh, relatively new to painting. This is his 12th model. Uh, mostly alternating between Bones and whiz kids. Uh, mostly looking at improving any atrocious mistakes. I mean, my best advice is there's not much I'm going to be able to tell you at this point. Like, it's your 12th model. Keep painting. Keep learning. Keep watching stuff and practicing. Improve your contrast. Improve your brush control. Like, the stuff you need to work on immediately, your 12 models in. That's basically nothing. Like, I don't mean any offense. Okay? But I've painted... 3,000 models in the past seven years, you know, like, it's the difference. Um, and it's not that you need to. My point is that, like, you want to, you're, you're still learning the muscle memory and the brush control and all the basics. And that's really the stuff. Like, telling you to focus on techniques would be the wrong thing to learn at this level, right? It would be like if you're just learning math and I said, okay, so now we're going to talk about calculus. Whoa, we haven't even gotten through, like, addition, multiplication, division yet. You know, like, let's slow down here. So my best advice is it looks good. It looks like you're painting relatively cleanly. So what I want you to focus on is your brush control, getting more models under your belt, and pushing your contrast. So I've talked a lot about volumetric highlighting and stuff like that. Start thinking about how to increase your contrast of value, lights and darks, Okay. Um, and I think you're, you know, you're coming along. Certainly, if you've got the, if you've got the bug, I'm very excited. I think this is a super fun model. Uh, I don't want to see him kill that pig, though. I hope that pig is his friend. Um, and uh, you know, bones models and whiz kids models and stuff like that are perfect to learn on. Um, my best advice, if you really want to practice on understanding your your volumes and really get that contrast down, pick up like some of the whiz kids the troll or the smaller giants or stuff like that. Like not the really, really big ones, but just kind of the smaller stuff. They have great exposed flesh and musculature. And those kinds of muscles are a great way to practice really understanding volumes because you can go Google a million image of just muscle bound warriors on the internet. You know, you can go look at Frazetta paintings or you can go look at Elmore paintings or you can go look at anything like that. You can go look at putty and paint or all the people who, who take it to a super high level and you can look at how they define the muscle texture and then you can start practicing it. But building contrast and brush control is going to be your real, real thing you want to work on at this level. 
understanding your paint, understanding how to thin it, understanding how to apply it, and understanding how to create contrast. That's the road you need to go down. Okay, next up, Abe. Uh, nowhere to improve, where to practice up to display competition quality. Uh, sure. So, I mean, my, my first thing I would say here is, if we're talking about, you know, sort of display or competition, the I wouldn't use a fig like this. It's a bit sort of overwhelming and cacophonous um, and out of balance. So, like, just that's just model choice. doesn't really have anything to do with anything else. The second thing I would say is the red itself feels flat like I don't know what to I don't know what to make of it or how to my my brain can't really resolve it because it's not responding to the light in the same way as other elements on the piece it feels very flat and even whereas things like your sword and these other parts are like really responding to the light um now as to the OSL yes I think this is way too bright and yellow like this should be an orange I think the OSL works over here on this leg I think that actually looks pretty cool I think over here, if we just took it down to an orange and had, you know, more basically blue here going up into an orange, we'd be in the right place. Okay. Um, lighting wise, we're a little overexposed here again, because I've got all these shadows, like we're way overblown. Um, if you have like zebra stripes, you can turn on your camera to see overexposure. Like when you go to the black and white, I can't even see detail in the arm here or in here or in here, right? If that's happening, you're overexposed, right? So just pay attention to stuff like that so we can actually see what the real colors are. Um, this The gray stone needs to push into, again, more contrast, more controlled texturing, probably. Um, the sword looks good. Although if you're going to do these little hash lines, they need to be thinner. Um, and like I'm not sure what you're aiming at by trying to capture there. So like in general, I don't love the hash line technique unless they're going to be really small, really tight, and really close together. Like, I would like this sword a lot more if it was just those blends going up and down. That would honestly sell me a lot more than what we did with all the little lines. So, those are my thoughts, Abe. Um, overall, it's a, this is a, you know, it's a crazy fig. Um, I have no idea what this is. That guy is really is an unusual figure. And, uh, you know, so keep pushing. Okay, next up, Sergey. Uh, Want to share his work? Uh, need fresh eyes because can't see his mistakes. Sure. So a couple things jumped out at me when I was looking at this one. One, the white beard feels a little too white. It feels like it needs to have a little more um, variation. Like, And let me tell you why. This is flame. Again, get rid of the Ferrari red from the fire. Too much yellow, not enough orange, uh, ochre orange and deep orange. Way too much red. Like, that's not how fire looks. Um, but... The thing that really jumped out at me is you've reflected this light here onto him. Like, you have areas where this yellow light is having an impact. It's reflecting on his hair, his face, stuff like that. Okay. If that's the case, then this is a relatively dark scene. But it's not a dark scene. It's a very bright scene. Your rock is painted as though there is a ton of other light source. Your green over here, which is completely shrouded from this, is painted as though there's a ton of other light. Your white beard is painted as though there's a ton of other light. Everything else on this figure is telling me this guy's standing in daylight. The base, the walls, his weapons, his other arms, his other pieces, everything says I'm standing in noontime daylight. And yet then all of a sudden this torch, which if I struck a, if I lit a torch in this room right now, it's not, this is not as bright as daylight, by the way, in my room. Um, it would not have any effect, right? Like if the lighting condition in here would basically not change. I mean, it would get all smoky and gross in here, but that's about it. So, like, if you're going to do... You cannot create light without creating a shadow, right? But there's already a dominant light. This light can't beat that light. So if you're going to do the torch thing and have that torch light, you need to bring everything else way down, okay? And create this lighting halo here, and that needs to define your lighting. And everything else needs to be, like, maybe a soft blue light or a moonlight or something like that. And it, what caught me out was when I looked at the white beard, it looked just really white. And it didn't have the deeper shadows I was expecting given the torch standing there. So that's probably the number one thing that jumped out at me, Sergey. So I hope that helps. Also, avoid this yellow cast on the stone here. Torches do not reflect this color yellow. This is like a cold, like, lemon yellow. That's not, torches don't reflect lemon, lemon yellow. At best, this would be like a soft orangish yellow glow. Okay, next up. Um, Zach, been a while since posted from review. Um, so this is Hobby Growth Project looking for advice on making whites pop more. I've started working with golden acrylic and Liquitex inks and white. General advice on things you can push. Sure. 
So, I mean, I was looking at these guys. I don't have any super close-up shots, so it's a little hard to tell. I mean, the white feels like it's good. What you're going to need to do if you want it to pop more is create more contrast. So, like, I noticed on things like the shield, you're using, you know, an ivory against a white. Well, that's never going to pop. If you make the edge of the shields dark, then the white shields will pop more, right? So, like, I don't know exactly the color scheme you're going for, but you have a very flat-toned color scheme. I mean, the white stands out against the blue because it's, you know, it's a much different color. Putting, like, a soft, bright ivory against a cold white, that's not going to be a lot of contrast, right? Um, so, I mean, if I was really going to do this, I would say, um, one, try to pay a little bit more attention to the faces inside there. Those felt unfinished. But two, the thing that jumped out at me is I feel like this would be so much more impactful if things like the edge of the shield and a couple of the pieces were more dark in some way. That could be changing them to an actual hue. That could be changing them to a darker version of the actual thing. I don't know. There's probably lots of options out there. But that would then make the white stand out way more to me and create a much nicer dark light dark contrast there. So hope that helps. Okay, next up, Sam. Uh, so Ephriel Stern. Um, went for a satin matte black armor uh, and velvet on the fabrics. Uh, would like any tips you would offer in general, maybe some more on white hair. Yeah, so I think the armor, like I understand the satin matte thing you're going for on the armor. It does feel still a little too flat is my honest answer. Um, the texturing on the inner part of the robe looks better than the outer part of the robe. And that's probably because of like, just the nature of what you have access to here but this one feels just way too rough like if you want a stippling texture we've really got to take that stippling into control the inside sorry let's go back to this one there we go the inside feels like it works to me you've caught a good highlight i like the vertical hashing i think that's okay um the outer one doesn't work it feels too rough too sort of chaotic um, like I can't get a I can't get a bead on what texture you're actually aiming at there. The armor feels like we need to up the value just a little bit in the high highlights. I understand you want it to feel more matte. That's cool. I would still bring it up a little bit more. It is still some kind of ref, you know mildly reflective enamel, um, so it makes sense that something would show. As to the hair, I think it works fine enough. She has a really weird haircut because of the way it's flying and flipping around. So honestly, I don't fault you for not being able to create sort of the perfect halo like you can do when they have their bobs. Um, so yeah, overall, I, I don't see any problem with the hair. I think it's fine. So there you go. All right, Emily, a uh, long time already crafty type person, but fairly new mini painter. Um, always aiming to do my pay best paint job. Uh, what do you think is the most impactful change or improvement I can make in my painting? Sure. So yeah, I mean, it's obvious you have come from an artistic background. This is a really cool pox walker. Um, so the best thing you can do is to look at more contrast of either value or hue. I think we've got some, we've got some good beginnings here, certainly. Um, but we need to continue to work that down. So one of the things that's, and it's more hue with this guy than it even is value. He feels like he needs more colors integrated into him. He's very monotone. Um, he's basically brown, right? I mean, that's, if I had to sum it up. In fact, if I really would sum it up, I would say he's, he's completely yellow if I had to use a real color. Um, because everything on him is a variation of yellow in some way. Uh, and so my real advice would be, look at how we work in other tones. You've got a little bit of reds and stuff around the the boils. I think that looks nice. Like all the wounds and boils and stuff look good, but you wanna have some maybe soft greens or purples or things like that, more softly glazed into the, into the muscle structure and things like that. And that'll probably help a great deal. So that would be my big piece of advice. But welcome, and hope uh, hope that helps. Steven, uh, all right, thanks for your feedback. It's really helped over the last few months. Uh, deliberate practice on trying to get smooth blends on skin. Tried to push with unusual and or contrasting shadows. First attempt using the airbrush, then something uh, other than base coat. Sure. So it's good. I think keep working at it. I like the variation on the skin. I think this looks nice. We can go deeper with the shadows. You, you, I would use a little bit deeper green in the shadows than that. Like this would be, that would be a good kind of just outside the shadow color, but it needs to come down into a more darker, uh, likely warmer color in the actual shadows themselves, okay? Um, so that's where I would kind of go there. Uh, but overall, I like the variation and sort of what you're doing there. I think that that works for me. We still need to work on picking out some of the detail and texture that stands out on things like the suckers that aren't doing anything or aren't a different color. 
I think the airbrush blending on the tentacle, yeah, works fine. No issue there. But again, don't, you know, using the airbrush or using whatever isn't an excuse to not start picking out that detail. This guy has a lot of beautiful detail. Like all these little sucker pods need to be some kind of color and stand out. They should be standing out from the, the piece they're attached to, right? When you see an octopus um, tentacle, it has like, the suckers are very sort of bright white against the soft pink of the octopus. They really stand out in this big contrasting way. And frankly, even if they didn't, it would still be the right choice artistically because it would make it more visually interesting. So there you go. Hope that helps. All right, next up, Joel. Uh, so this is a historical figure. Trying to integrate warm hues in the highlights and bluish ones in the shadows to create a daylight lighting situation. Does it sell? Also, the last time I entered, I got a critique for not integrating enough colors into the flesh. Does it look better this time? Yes. So first first things first, yes. The To your last question, 100% it does. Love the blue tones in the lower part of the face. Love the red tones in the cheeks in here. Love it on the hands. Yes, 100%. Great. Great stuff. Um, we need to like probably smooth out just a few areas a little more. Like he's some of the lights and shadows aren't placed exactly where you want them. Like these, these come in a little too far. This cheekbone actually would come down here, so this this shadow shouldn't be extending quite that far. The red should be more wrapping up around the backside of the cheek. But we're definitely going the right direction. Keep experimenting with it. And again, my best advice go watch makeup contouring videos. It is the best thing you can do. You ever want to know how to integrate colors into skin, male skin or female skin, by the way, there's plenty of male makeup contouring videos as well. But go watch those wizards work. They are masters of color and contrast and co in a way that miniature painters will never understand. They, they are light years ahead of us uh, on being able to take any volume and completely restructure it. They can make their cheekbones look four inches different than where they actually are, right? That is an incredible skill. So that's my number one thing. So that works. Now, um, yeah, honestly, the rest of it, you know, talking about the naturalistic shadows, um, you know, historical stuff tends to fall into a lower contrast range for the most part. And yeah, I think it's largely working. There's probably a little bit of stuff I would smooth out. I'd still probably bring some shadows down. You may want to think about some final glazes of a soft shadow color. So if you're going for like cold shadows, then take some Payne's Gray ink, thin it down, and when you're all done with everything, all your camo patterns down, everything's there, just softly glaze some of that into the shadows in a really controlled fashion. It can be a great way to create universal environmental shadows um, while still preserving your overall work. So um, I think that's probably would be my best advice for you. Hope that helps, Joel. All right, Sam. Uh, so one on the rosary beads, one of them slightly blue-white, but found it very hard to do. On the cloak, highlighted with hashes towards a gray-white and then glazed over with red. Any advice on how to do this without coming too pink? Um, yeah, sure. So let's talk about the cloak first because that's the easy one. The Anytime you put white under there, that's what's going to happen. Glaze or make your hashes with flesh tone and you, and then go over it with a couple layers of red and that won't happen. So you use like a sunny skin tone. That will keep in the red. Second advice is take something like a red ink. So something like a, like a Vallejo Game Ink Red, one, a, a big go-to favorite of mine. Thin it down into a glaze, multiple coats of that, and you'll get it back to a pop in red, okay? Then it won't matter if there's white underneath. Now, as to the rosary beads, which we had to zoom around here to get, yeah, there's way too much actual blue. Like, if you're going for that kind of pearlescent type of feeling, two things need to happen. You need to highlight them like globes, okay? Which a globe highlights in a specific way, which is light into... I mean, if you just highlight how to... If you just look at, like, how to highlight a globe, okay? Uh, buh, 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 buh. Nope, of course. Of course I wouldn't get it. But that's all right. Uh, let's talk about, like, globes. Globe shape in light. Okay, that's fine. It's going to... Apparently Google's not my friend. But anyway... Look at I, Cujo has a video on on this, so go check out Cujo's video on highlighting the different uh, the different types. The key with a globe is it's like this. This is the globe. It goes one, two, three, four, five, four, three, right? That's what you need to capture. So it comes back to that crescent highlight on the bottom. Now, 
doing that and moving your blue up and then having those additional lights on the bottom with the white would subtract out the amount of blue. Okay. And that's going to make them feel more like they belong in that white pattern with just a soft influence of blue. So there you go. Hope that helps. All right, Patrick, recently participated in a store challenge in which we were asked to create something out of a curated bag of bits. Uh, I'd be interested in some feedback regarding compositional elements in particular, though any other pointers are more than welcome. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know what to give you feedback on for this. Like, it's a really super cool challenge. Um, compositionally, this came out really neat. You did a fun thing just with random bits. You made something that's compelling and feels like it exists. So I dig it. Um... I think the, the the ruins you talked about, that came out really well. I'm glad that, that you used that hobby cheating. That works out fine. I mean, I think given what you had to work with, yeah, you created a very nice vignette that sells to me. So, yeah, no, no feedback. And I don't know what, you know, like, it's good. It's good stuff. Okay, um, Bartaz, uh, looking for some feedback on the flesh since this is his first larger model in oils. Yeah, so I, I did some, spe I spent time looking at this. Oh, also he said... Um, critique on the eyes and the slime slime looks great slime looks fantastic came out wonderful eyes look good a little bit more hashing toward that around the slit okay so even the yellow needs to be a little bit more hashed bring in the orange slices just a little bit deeper and then come back to a light on the out very outside so it needs to go darkest light darker darker out to light on the very edge it's a weird thing but on alien eyes like that think of like the um the eye of sauron okay and you'll have the right idea now as to working in oil paints, um, it's good. I like all the colors you're getting bold with here, but we, it's clearly we still need to work them more together. So my best advice in looking at this, it still feels like they're not as smooth as they could be, which tells me that we're not spending enough time with our dry brush after the application, really smoothing things down and bringing them all together. So I have a couple different soft dry brushes that you can use to really bring all those oil paints together and create something really smooth, even on a texture. That's probably the number one thing that jumps out of me. But I, I love how easy uh or you know how great all these different colors uh, you made and I, I this feels like a fantastic model to do with oil paint so hope that helps okay next up Raphael. um overall feedback on any tips if the cape sells the transition from blue to purple and it highlights with dark bits so i looked at this one earlier and yeah the blue to purple works i think that's a nice soft transition i got no problem with that we need to go higher on the highlights though like again as i've said many times about this whole thing more contrast more contrast is usually the key um, it's very rare that that's not my piece of advice. Uh, but yeah, we, we need to just take it a lot higher. We need to get that, that cloak needs to come way up into a higher light and the shadows need to come down into a more soft, gradual gradation into a deeper four and five. So contrast is king. And I think that's really what you want to work on here, but the transition works. I think it looks very nice. I think the purple to blue looks great. So well done. Okay. Ray Cooper. Uh, so red dragon is completed general feedback on the whole model specific feedback on the flame. So, uh, don't have this blue in here. I don't know if you were going, if you're in your head, it was like a blue flame, but it doesn't look like it. Don't like skip that, that oven light thing. Just make this be white, red or sorry, white, yellow. It's so, like right here. There should be a tiny amount of like just pure white, hot into white, yellow, into a small amount of ochre into mostly orange, red into then like some bits of, of deep red, black, brown, like I mentioned earlier. Fire is very specific. I have multiple videos on it. Go watch those videos. First thing that jumps out at me is you've got to pay way more attention to textures and volume. So again, more contrast. Top of the arm. Top of the arm is much brighter than the bottom of the arm. Top of the arm is not much brighter than the bottom of the arm, right? These things are all the same color. Second thing is you worked a lot in red. Always, 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 always give your skill. Get yourself some matte varnish, ultra matte varnish, tester's dull coat, whatever. When you're working with red, Red is naturally very glossy. You do not want this kind of shine. It's not helping you any. It does not make a fig look good. <coughs> okay, so that needs to be matted the heck out, like absolutely matted out. And then from there, my number one thing is contrast. Even if it's just some dry brushing to pick out the scales, but the belly's too flat, the scales are too flat, the bones are too flat. Like we've got to push that contrast up. Okay, so more, more, more contrast on all the elements. So there you go. Hope that helps. Okay, Roger. Um, first time posting, uh, kind of all over the place in terms of style technique. Haven't found yours yet, but I think I'm kind of zoning in. Um, two things you did well and two things you should improve on. So here's one thing you should improve on for sure, which is taking photos. Okay, this is not like, buddy, come on, man. What are you doing to me here? 
Is this the photo you want to share of your mini? Okay. So I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying, like, you had to take this photo and know this wasn't good. What is this shadow? What is this direct light? What is going on here, man? Okay. So, like, there are articles on GW's website on how to take photos. Let's, please, folks, read it. Give me a good photo so I can give you a good review. Okay. Because there's way too much direct light here to actually tell you what I think of this mini. I mean, that's what's hard. When it's this overexposed or out of focus or whatever, it's hard for me to tell you what I like. So what, and, and as far as style goes, it feels like you're still early in your painting journey. Don't worry about a style. That's not what you need to focus on right now. Style is not something that you develop after years necessarily, okay? What you want to focus on at this point, like things I like. You're pushing yourself on your skin tone. I like that. Um, like, it feels like you're trying to get some good contrast in the green of the skin tone, which I like. Uh, so now we need to keep pushing that contrast and really push paint cleanliness. There's several points on here where it feels like the paint is messy. It's getting in the wrong places. It's not where we want it to be. So really focus on paint application and cleanliness and contrast. That's what I'm going to tell you to work on. Okay. So um, that's my biggest piece of advice for you, as well as Give me some photos in non-diffuse lighting against a neutral color background. Set your phone stable. Take the picture. Okay? All right. Okay. Next up, Joe, uh, what did you do right and what did you do wrong? Okay, so first time trying OSL and making a lava base. Yeah, so, I mean, one of the things here to me is it doesn't feel like, again, we've got a lot of very shiny paint or something. Like, I can't tell what this shine or texture is. Again, put the, like... <laughs> Mini, neutral background, diffuse lighting, photo. Okay, guys, this is a bit, like this month, the, the photos are killing me. I'm not going to lie. All right? I don't, I'm not, don't want to be mean. Now, with, like, when it comes to OSL, we shouldn't be doing OSL right here. Like, it's fine. If you want to play around with it, that's cool. I don't have any issue. But, like, I, I can't read the individual elements. So what do we need to work on, like, we need to work on really defining the individual elements in a clean way, matting out the paint job, making sure every element is separate. Like right here, he's got this strap, and yet there's the brown of his cloak all over it. His face is coming down on the the green of his cloak, right? So like number one thing you want to be working on is paint cleanliness and application. So like get that control, get the paint matte and, and stuff like that. Small notes, blonde hair is not yellow. Um, I, I know lots of people who have blonde hair. None of them are lemon yellow. Blonde hair is um, actually like sepia tone to slightly bright ochre with white included, with a white inclusion into it. So more of a desaturated ochre. Don't use a lemon yellow for blonde hair. That never works for me. Now, as to the thing I, I do really like, so there, but I, you know, I don't want to leave you just with that kind of like, I don't want it to be negative. I want to show, I do want to say there's a thing here that you did that I actually really, really like. And that's this frying pan and the glow of it over the lava. I actually think you did a really good job capturing that. Okay. Like a really good job. I love the way the lights up here and you trace the edge and then it goes gray. And then we've got this soft glow and into the hot edge. That honestly sells to me. I think you did a wonderful job with that. So, um, well done. I think what you want to focus on is really like separating the elements through contrast and definition and paint application. That's what we need to work on. Okay, Simon, uh, recently, recently released Sergeant Ripper Jackson as a means to push his skill. What's right, what's wrong, and where he can improve? Yeah, sure. So the number one thing that jumped out at me here is largely contrast on a lot of the elements. The green feels kind of flat, especially on like her jacket, on her band. Again, the muscle structure, can, we can go for a little more definition. It's probably stronger, but you have the, the shadows are too thin. This is the... This is the the sunken wash syndrome I see a lot where like you have the muscle structure and like this is all basically what so it's like one two three four five right like we just the volumes are way off we need some softer shadows really setting the the volumes here same with like the gun the metal things like that those need to be struck out a little more um with a little more contrast a little more edges picked out a little more you know kind of variation especially in the metals and stuff like that the i like the texturing and stuff on her leg and on the the scratches on that sort of thing so i've got no problem with that um but i feel like in general we can we can up that contrast and push it some more 
Same with the skin, the integration. It's not even as much contrast of value, but there definitely needs to be a little more contrast of hue in there as well. Um, that's kind of the stuff that jumped out at me. So uh, overall, we just were a little flat. We needed a little more tones in there, but she's nice. It's well executed, and uh, I think you did a good job. So yeah, cool stuff. Okay, next up, Alan. Uh, any thoughts appreciated by Moses Army to go? I'd really appreciate one main thing to work on. Uh, sure. Uh, okay. So, one main thing to work on. First of all, I think this piece looks really nice. The metallic work is good. You're, you're taking control of the light in a big way. Um, the contrast on the blue looks really soft and smooth. I enjoy that. I enjoy the edges. Um, the lightning is still a little thick. Um, honestly, looking at this guy... I, and trying to think about, you know, sort of the rest of the army. So the things that pop out to me on this guy, let me say this way, and I don't know how applicable it is to the rest of the army, but the Dracoth himself feels flat and like he needs more action, more contrast, more scales picked out, more variation in tone uh, and in hue. The white of like his banner and his holy toilet paper, that feels really, really flat. Um, it's not, it shouldn't be popping like the metal, but it needs more. There's not enough on that. Um, the only other thing that jumped out at me was the the cloak with the lightning. Like, I like the lightning effect. I don't think they're all going to have lightning cloaks. And the cloak itself feels really flat and strange, like how the lightning is interacting with that light. So I'm not sure what's meant to be going on there. If you're going to do a whole army of lightning cloaks, it's probably fine. But it's a little tough for me to read, like, what's actually a highlight and what's actually a shadow. So those are kind of the little things. There wasn't really one big thing. I think you're doing a really good job of getting control of the light on the metals, and that's the toughest thing I usually give people feedback on on Stormcast. So I think that puts you in a strong position for the rest of the army. So hope that helps. All right, Darren, uh, first model for you've submitted for review anywhere. Um, favorite um, mini from the Warband he painted. Um, rushed it a bit towards the end, but was going for basically like, you know, getting on the tabletop. Um, any advice on getting a purple white skin that looks good is appreciated. Um, sure. So purple, white skin, go watch my exploring colors, purple video. And that will teach you a lot about how to highlight purple and how to get that under control. Um, I would actually say don't use white is my number one advice. Like if you want a purple, white skin, don't use white, use purple and a couple different flesh tones, like a, a sunny skin tone. And then a, uh, a pale flesh that will feel like purple, white skin. And then what you need to be doing to getting it all done is once you've set your values, you need to be glazing it in very thin glazes of your original purple. Okay. That's what actually makes it, ties it all together and makes it look good. Again, go watch the Exploring Purple video. Now, as to the feathers, um, you know, if you, like, I think they're fine for what you're doing here if you're going for tabletop. If you want to spend a lot more time, then the right answer is you need to go in and create texture, which means taking a very thin, sharp brush and going and creating hundreds of little tiny hashes on each feather, All right? Now, if you don't want to do that, you can create a couple interesting feathers where you make a couple mixed in that are a different color, or you make a different band in the middle. Like, that would be an interesting way to make this more visually interesting as you make the center of this, like, a blue or something like that. Um, and you make a couple of feathers in there a slightly different color. But the texturing is ultimately what you're going to want to do if you really want to pop it out. So, there you go. Hope that helps. Okay, Oliver, um, first time posting, uh, Primaris Ancient for your Crimson Fists. A couple questions. The texturing on the banner and the OSL on the eyes. Uh, looking for that or anything else general. Sure. So, two thoughts. Let's go back to the first photo. Texturing on the banner. I have no problem with it. There's a little bit up here where you need to carry it out a little farther. If, if you're really wanting to, to, to make it to pop pop and like take this up to a high level. But honestly, especially as some, uh, an army piece... I have zero problem with the texturing on the banner. I'm in love with it. It's great. It's great. Well done. Like, no no pushback. It's, yes, solid A work. Now, let's talk about why this doesn't work. <coughs> why the lighting doesn't work is because you have a glow up here. That's it. Repaint this white, okay? And it will look correct. These eyes, they have a visor that's like this, okay? Like, I'm over-exaggerating it. But if my eyes were glowing, it would not be casting light on my forehead right here. Because it can't get up there. So this edge should be a slight pink edge. 
okay? Like that hard edge above their eyes. And then down here should be a very soft glow that slightly fades out over the tops of the cheeks. So you need to basically glaze back with the white a little bit here and get rid of the top parts. Just a very small adjustment to the to the lower part. But I guarantee you, if you just turn this back to white, you're going to be like, oh, never, or white gray or whatever. It'd be white gray, actually. You'll be like, oh, never mind. It's fixed. That's it. So there you go. Okay. Okay. So next up, we've got Kartik, who brings us uh, this model done in a very bright sort of uh, dual lighting scheme. Looking for feedback on the OSL, uh, you know, and then also the face and the eyes. So let's talk about that. So the back works better for me than the uh, than the front. Um, you did a nice job of setting the overall color tone and palettes. I think that works relatively well. Um, but the problem is we don't have our lighting set exactly where I would expect the lighting to be falling. Um, given where shadows should be like on her stomach, this area down here should actually be caught in a little more light. So we just need to really control the overall light effect of like where this thing is casting from in a little more... Uh, in a little more fashion and, and really get our shadows and our lights under control. You also want to make sure you're smoothing them out. They feel a little rough the, as far as like blends and stuff like that go. Now the back, the back of it is because it's in the softer warm tones. Also, we have this really hard line between the two, I think. You don't want that. It shouldn't go like super warm light. Light doesn't work like that. It doesn't, it's not, you know, I mean, other than if you zoom out and look at the whole globe, of where the sun is, but that's not what we're talking about here. These are soft lights. There's going to be something else behind her that's bouncing it and things like that. There needs to be a soft transition through shadow, basically. Because in the in the middle part, where neither light source is really acting, there is a shadow. That's why that works like that. Now, um, as to the eyes, yes. I mean, the problem with the eyes is there. there's too much white. The pupils are, are very large, and the circle around them is too dark, right? So, like, looking at my eyes, okay... I guess I have a dark ring, but it's controlled. And if you're, if women have makeup on the under eye, on the under lid, the lower lid, it isn't that same dark color. There's still skin tone there, right? So it needs to be more of a soft transition out, right? Um, and it's very, always very, uh, it's always a very gentle transition down from any color under the eye out into the cheekbone. Again, <clears throat> makeup and contouring videos are your guide. As well, you don't have any real definition of, like, the iris, the pupil. At a, at, a, at a size like this, you want to make sure you've got, you're getting color into the eyes. And most importantly, you want to capture the life light, which is the dot of light that's on the eye's reflection, right? Like, when we look at people who are used to seeing a life light, it's where the light comes and reflects and, and, in our, and bounces off to, to your eye. Um, it's what makes people feel alive. So that's even that little white dot would go a huge long way to making the eyes feel more alive. So that's my number one piece of advice. Hope that helps. Okay, next up, Zab. Uh, working on a Knight of Shroud conversion using the Light of Eltharion. By the way, love this idea. Fantastic. Um, push it to a competition level. So if you can point me the area who need more focus, it would be great. Sure. So one, if we're going to talk about competition, we have got to smooth this model way out. Again, we're, we're, we're breaking the rule of finished models only, but okay. Um, at any rate, um, the, um, the, we got to smooth things way out. Our blends are super rough here all over the place. We've got to smooth things down. So like all, like in some places I understand you're trying to do texture like this up here. I'm not sure it actually completely works because the scratches don't feel like scratches. They just feel like there are way too many of them and they feel like paint. Um, if we're going to do scratches up here, they need to be multi-directional. They need to be of different sizes. They need to be chips and hashes and things like that. If we're talking about like the sword needs to be these lights and all that, that needs to be glazed way down. Like all that needs to be glazed out, smoothed out, blended out. Okay. Um, when we're talking about the cloak, if we're doing like a textured cloak, I need a thousand more hashes and I don't need these vertical ones. They're not doing anything. I only need horizontal hashes and I need, I mean, literally a thousand more over this whole cloak. Like, I need you to sit there with a sharp, thin brush for an hour and just do hashes of varying sizes like I did in the in the video where I talked about uh, doing textured cloaks, okay? Um, but yeah, the smooth blends and then finishing out your texture and actually selling it, I think, is what you're really going to want to work on. Right now, everything looks really rough, and you want to make sure that's 
smoothed out. Like stuff like this on the edge of the armor, all that needs to be smoothed way down if we're trying to go for competition level. Okay. Hope that helps. All right, next up, Bertrand. Uh, looking for uh, an overall critique focused on contrast, light placement, textures, and attempt at glowing light. Sure. So, I mean, I think the texture stuff works fine. Um, actually, let's go back to... Where is it at? Sorry, this photo. Like, the glowing little runes, that works for me. I've got no issue with that. The texture on the cloth, that works for me. Um, I like the, the texture in the tree, so I think that's fine, too. It's actually contrast where I feel like we're missing out. His skin still feels rather flat. I don't have enough variation of either tone or value in there. He needs more. Now, I like the pink and the addition of the green in the eyes. The face does draw attention. I like that. But, like, the arms and the volumes of the arms and the uh, torso and stuff like that, that doesn't feel like it's doing enough for me. So that's kind of the main area, continuing to pop that contrast, shaping those muscles, those volumetric highlights, and the integration of not only value but hue, I think is the main thing I would give you feedback on. So there you go. All right, next up, Evan. Uh, biggest question is on the tattoo on the side of the head. Does it read as a tattoo? Sure. So let's just look at this picture. First of all, the war paint works. Get that. No problem there. The problem with the tattoo is it's not well enough defined. So tattoos need to be incredibly sharp and well placed when they were placed they were placed with saturated ink through a needle that was embedded into the skin they're going to be sharp they're going to be potent and then as they age they fade so that means skin tone goes back over top so again i go back and watch my you know tattoos video again it needs to be if you're going to do these sharp thin tattoos like this they can't i can't see paint streaks right and that's what i see a lot of where i can see the actual brush strokes and where like the paint didn't you know, this is really rough on this edge and we've got lines jumping in size. It would be very precise, very exact, and very solid. And then you glaze the flesh back over to soften a, a otherwise solid image. You're not smoothing the edges, you're softening the overall effect. That's what I would say, okay? So there you go, that's my feedback for you. Uh, okay, next up, in Veritas. Uh, so first time submitting. Paint up this chaplain to a high tabletop standard. Um, feedback on what needs improving to take it to display quality. Um, sure. So, I mean, if we're going to go up to display, then we've got, there's, I mean, there's a lot of work in between tabletop and display, right? So what's working well? Um, the green and the texturing uh, works fine for me. Love the dirt on the boots. All that stuff sells. Don't like the gold. Um, it's way too that color and nothing else. So a lot more taking control of the light working in inks and stuff like that to gain control of shadows and highlight your TMM in, an, in, in a non-metallic fashion, um, bringing out more highlights, softer transitions of gold to silver. It just feels way too yellow-orange. Like, this is a gold ring. Look at the color of this on the screen right now. Like, that's a 24-karat gold ring or whatever, right? Um, look at this compared to that color, okay? This is cheddar cheese over here. That's gold, right? So the that and my guess is that's retributor armor gold. I do not like that base color. It doesn't actually feel like gold, but you can get it there if you start mixing in some of the silver colors. Now, as to you know where you're going to go, the biggest thing is if we're going to do that with like talking about display quality, that means popping the armor way up and smoothing the blends to our highlights. We've got a couple places where you took it up. Again, for tabletop, I think this is actually quite successful. Uh, even like a high tabletop, I agree with you. I think it's fine. Looks nice. Looks clean. Got some good texturing added. Great pigment work, no problems with that. If we're going to talk about moving to display, then that means we've got to pop the contrast on the armor way up and really put a lot of time into smoothing the blends. It's a big gulf we've got to jump, but that would be my advice for you. So, hope that helps. Okay, next up. Uh, Mads, looking for... Um, uh, study in brown is quite a challenge for you to set all that apart. Any comments help me focus on specifics would be much appreciated. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to deal in sort of a monotone piece, then contrast of value becomes all the more important and again that would be the main thing i would give you feedback on overall i think it looks nice but yes we need more separation of elements through contrast right so the parts that aren't in brown should really be popping out we should be having more dark lines between it the skin needs to come up to a higher highlight in places where it'd really be reflecting to make it pop out the leather needs like hard edges and scratches and wearing and texture and sort of edges that are catching the light in a way and, and scratches and stuff that have caught the light. The hair needs like a halo of light, that kind of thing. So 
hopefully that helps give you some specifics as to what you can work on. But it's a cool fig, and I do think you're in the right tone of the skin. I think that looks really nice. It's a really cool skin tone. Uh, we just need to pop up that contrast more. Okay, next up, John. Uh, is Fire, Fire Slayer's Warcry Warband? Um, talking about it proving his skin and giving the hair a pop. Yeah, so my answer on the... So again, pictures, very, you know... Please take the picture set in front of a neutral background with indirect lighting, stable camera, yada yada. Okay. Now... The skin we need to keep going. I mean, basically the story here is going to be the same. Just you're, This is good. We need to keep pushing the contrast. You mentioned a yellow wash. Don't use a wash. A yellow wash is not going to really do anything over orange to pop the hair. You want to get in there with yellow paint, pop the edges, and then orange wash back down because yellow is going to flow to the, to, the, to the recesses. You don't want yellow in the recesses of the hair. You want the strands that are exposed to be turning yellow or a brighter color, right? You want the recesses to be shadowed, so it needs to go the other way around. Um, so I'd you know go in there, get some some uh, like an ochre color, an orange yellow, something like that on the side on, on your brush. Use the side of your brush to catch that hair, and then take an orange wash and pull it down toward the orange in a controlled fashion. Okay. As far as the skin goes, again smoothing it out and working on more contrast, both of hue and value, as I've said many times throughout this review. So that's what you're gonna want to do. But overall, cool stuff. Okay, Yon, uh, looking for, this is a work in progress of his first ever bust. Again, no work in progress, finished stuff only, it'll keep going. Uh, okay, um, do different rules apply to the change of scales and busts? Yes, 100%. Um, also, I tried to go with a streaky non-metallic metal, but it doesn't work really well. I'd like to push skin further, any tips? Sure. So, let's break this down. Okay, streaky non-metallic metal. Go watch my brushed uh iron or brush steel sorry uh non-metallic video you need more streaks they need to be thinner and they need to be closer to each other i'm actually working on a big piece right now it's just a game if you're going to go for that style it's a game of doing thousands of little lines over and over and over and over and over again with slight changes in the variation of tone and then glazing it all together after that right now um so so that would be my feedback there now, does a butt, as far as like, is a bust painted differently? Yes, 100%. Go watch my bust painting 101 video um, because I talk about it in detail for a long time as what you need to do different. The key with a bust is you keep going until you've almost lost your mind and then you go twice as far as that because there's always more you can do. Now, as to variation on the skin, I actually think like around the face looks really nice. I like the lips. I love the little color and the, the cheeks and the light emanating out of his glowing eyes. I think that's all really neat. What we need to see in the skin itself is just more integrations of, again, a higher highlight through the addition of probably a Caucasian flesh tone into the blue to create your highlights, and then more glazes of soft red purples into the shadows, right? And and really, you've got to focus in and bring out every texture, every detail, every everything. It's not like painting a 28 mil miniature where you can just kind of go over a whole area in a volume and do it. Everything has to be popped out completely because you're working in such a scale where all that detail, all that texture, all that everything needs to be given love, care, and attention. Okay? So, but go check out that video and that'll help you out. All right. Next up. One, um, first time posting. Uh, this mini's where he's at right now looking for a general critique and what to improve on. Um, sure. So, looking really nice. Um, cool application of some different stuff. I like the contrast and the horns. Um, we could go a little farther even there, so keep working on that, but that's nice. Um, I like how we're pushing the contrast on the skin. Paint job feels pretty clean. Um, I think probably the main things I'd tell you to work on at this point coming back are um, there's some places where we're getting kind of rough in our blends. So push that contrast up a little higher. Where I see it actually missing is in the shadows. We Maybe a little bit of highlights, a little bit more one, but not much. It's mainly your four and five that's lacking. And then we just need to work on our blending and smoothing that all together, okay? Now, again, if I was going to paint an army of, like, you know, 30 Zangor, I'm not sure I'd care that much. So it depends on the standard you're going for. I want to be real clear on that. Like, I'm very sensitive to people who are doing army painting and are not going to sit there and spend, you know, 8, 10, 20 hours on a fig on a single person in a unit of 30. And I am very sympathetic to that. I don't either. We all got to cut corners somewhere, and I'm cool with that. But if you're talking about what you want to work on, to me... It seems like pushing contrast and smoothing out your blends, those should be your sort of mission statements for how you, where you want to go coming forward. But welcome back to the hobby. This is a super cool fig, and I love your instincts with colors. I think that's really great. 
All right, next up, uh, Panda. Um, Re-entered the hobby in November 19, watched a lot of the videos, and hey, I'm super glad to help, man. I'm, I'm glad that that's very helpful. So the question, short version, did you push the contrast enough or should I refine it more? No, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> to, to be more, to actually give some useful feedback for you. No, we didn't push the contrast enough. And where it especially falls down is in things like the horns, where you know these need to have a, a colored shape to them, brighter towards the tip, deeper towards the bottom. But especially in the red, the red is very flat throughout the whole thing. The skin and the gray skin is better. I like the sort of contrast of hue you've started to work in there with some of the reds in the low parts. I'm seeing those. I'm liking those. I like what you're doing. Let's go farther. Let's keep pushing in a little more maybe red to purple tones down that, that lower skin. I think we could really be somewhere and be popping something with some good contrast. So we don't have enough four and five in the skin, but I do love the variation of hue. Uh, now on to the, on the red, we just need to go, you know, a lot farther. Like we need more contrast there. The integration of deeper purples, browns, blacks, there's lots of ways to, to shade red, but we've got to bring that deeper and really create some highlight and shadow in the red. So there you go. That's my feedback for you. All right, Chris, uh, overall proud on how he turned out. Um, I would love to really push this guy even further, but I'm not sure what he's missing. So I'll give you the number one thing that popped out to me when I looked at this fig earlier and I was reviewing all these. I think he's nice. Um, but the number one thing that popped out to me is it's it's the contrast. Yes, that's what it is. It's always the contrast. Um, the gold, all, especially with the metals, though. Now, I think we could go farther on some of the plum color of the cape. But what really jumped out at me was the, was the gold, the metals. Go watch any of my videos on shading uh, true metallic metals in a non-metallic style. The metal here is just looking like metal. It's very flat. It doesn't have a lot of tonal variation to it, and that's what needs to improve. So that would be my number one piece of feedback to you, Chris. So hope that helps. But overall, super cool Armand. I think he looks really nice. Okay, next up, Chris. Taking the feedback into account to make the paint thinner and smoother. Good. We're getting there. Keep working it. I think we still need to thin down a little more. There's places where it's not, you know, like, or just layer more a little bit. Uh, get a little more control of it. Um, that being said, I can see the improvement. So now we've gotten to the place where our paint control is getting better, and now what we're going to work on is, again, contrast and and uh, and that kind of thing. So especially with stuff like the sword, which feels extremely flat, the white armor, uh, the gray pieces, those are the stuff that's really jumping out to me. Your red has some nice variation in it. I'm okay with the red. Um, you do need to matte varnish out the red. As usual, red paints, because the pigment they use are often very glossy, so make sure you matte varnish that out. You do not want your red to shine. You do not want this to happen. If the shadows are shiny, they're not shadows. They're light, not shadow. That makes something look bad. So make sure you matte varnish out things, especially red. Okay. Alex, first time posting here. Finish the squad in this style, and this one's the best of five. General critique, what could, what could you have done better? Um... Sure. Uh, and then you have some questions about the leather. So, I mean, it depends on what you're aiming at. If you're aiming at, like, a really clean, nice tabletop standard, I think this is fine. Um, you know, it's a it's traditional GW style for, like, a good tabletop. Sort of the flat color and edge highlights and stuff like that, right? No, I don't think there's too much dust on the feet. I think that totally sells for, like, a dry desert atmosphere, by the way. Now, if we're talking about what would you do to go farther, I mean, it would be contrast of value, right? Like, take that armor, we need to create more naturalistic, volumetric highlighting of the shapes. Deeper shadows, higher highlights don't rely just on the edges, but actually create some more volumetric highlights. And it's a very simple answer, and that's absolutely what I'd tell you to work on, if that's the direction you want to go. The other thing I would say is make sure your elements are cleanly separated. So, like, with things like the hand, you know, when he's got these joints in between his fingers, make sure there's something dark in between each of those you've got the edges but you also need the shadows and the hand doesn't really have it that's the part that jumped out at me as being kind of flat all right matt uh with something i'm not going to review because it's i don't know how to review an army um but uh this is amazing he said i and i want to highlight such an awesome accomplishment um he said this project was all kicked off by hobby cheating 170 throughout the pmp and the hobby cheating video has been instrumental in keeping him motivated as a painter um 130 gray gavos knocked out buddy that's amazing congratulations i almost want to do a uh we'll probably do some army review videos at some point in time in the future where i want people to actually submit armies and do specific evaluation on those um and that might actually be what we start doing is having monthly instead of just a generic everybody throw everything in and we give feedback events we might come to like 
monthly types of events, submit these particular types of figures so I can give really pointed feedback on specific types of stuff. And Army is one of the things I was thinking about. At any rate, regardless of all that, this is an amazing accomplishment. Look at how wonderful this is. I mean, Matt, you killed it. Uh, I love this whole Goblin Army. I love all his fanatics. I love all his Gobbos. Um, I love Skarsnik and or the Goblin Boss with Cape Swig or whatever it is. Um, I don't think he's Skarsnik anymore. I think Skarsnik is long dead. But just fantastic. Like, I love seeing a finished army. This is just makes me so unbelievably happy. Beautiful job. Well done. Well, well done, Matt. Something to absolutely celebrate. Congratulations. Keep painting. I think you did a fantastic job. There is nothing better than finishing a painted army. It is a celebration. I wish we could all do a balloon drop, man. It's, it's great. Well done. Well done. Okay. Next up, Florian. Uh, first bunch of the Sisters Army tried to get some practice with war colors. Basically looking for um, feedback regarding color composition uh, and also just general feedback since he's got to paint 50 more of them. Yeah, so again, it depends on the standard you're going for. I, I did look at these earlier, and my answer is I think this is the good shot that I want to talk on. Um, these work. Like, these sell for me. Um, if we're talking about, you know, again, doing a tabletop standard, like, and again, if you're doing 50 more, that feels like we're talking tabletop standard. We're not looking for a display piece or a competition. And so if we're talking as an army compositionally, yep, it works. Love the magenta with the little pops of teal here and there. You know, you're in my sweet spot. You know, that works from what I paint. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think overall these look really great. Um, again, if you wanted to go a little farther, we could push the contrast on the magenta armor uh you know glaze in some soft purple shadows that's really going to be a wonderful color like use a if we're talking about war colors get yourself out some violet five and thin that down and glaze that into the shadows and bing bang you're gonna have some some really nice uh really nice shadow work on there but for the most part i mean again if you're just talking about an army these sell for me i'm, I'm a buyer so yeah i think they look great bring on the whole beautiful sisters of battle army like this Okay, next up, Tebow. Uh, latest attempt at playing with strong light source. I don't know which will be the next competition he'll be able to attend, but I love your opinion on what can be approved. Yeah, this is a beautiful piece, Tebow. It really is. I spent some time just ogling this earlier. Um, I think the lighting that you're playing with here is largely working. I love it bringing out the tones and desaturating in the shadows. There's a couple areas of light that felt like they should be a little more lit uh like the stick back here on his back like this weapon haft didn't feel as bright as it could be um the light feels like it extends a little bit unusually to the bottom of the this like i'm not i don't have the piece in front of me but my impression of it is that nose piece curves back in a little bit and so there'd be kind of a naturalistic shadow on the bottom there so i'm not really sure but again i can't super i don't have the thing in front of me to look at um, but like looking at it as best I could tell from the photos, it felt like it curved in. Um, I think probably in some areas I would smooth out a little more like the blade. I like the hashing style. I do a couple more glazes to bring in some more ambient colors, especially here on the bottom of the blade where it's turned away from the light. Maybe give me some bluish cold shadows down here. This was the part that jumped out at me when I was looking at it. This felt rough back here and here. And if we're talking, like, you you showed me that we are in real cold light, like cold shadows, other than the direct light source, which feels warm. So it feels like the off-highlight colors of the NMM should have some, some of that soft bluish, purplish glazing built into it down here, down here, over here. That was the thing that jumped out at me when I was looking at it, Tebo. I mean, this is a beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, previous question about busts, this is what I'm talking about. Like, look at the texture. Tebow went as far until he was insane and then did twice as much. Look at the texture in the beard, in the horns, in the hair, in the skin, in the wood, in the bone, right? Like, I could keep going. That's what's fantastic about this. Not just the lighting, but the texturing is actually Tebow, the part here that, that totally sells me. So, um, this is going to do well <laughs> i suspect at whatever competition you bring it to uh or at least it would if i was judging so there you go um all the best to you my friend and this is this is another triumph an absolute gorgeous piece so very well done all right damien uh okay so uh finally finished this his monster i'm generally looking for overall feedback especially the skin the weathering and the base 
Uh, sure. So, okay, let's talk, Damien. So the thing I noticed when looking at this is one thing I wouldn't do this, just as a general on a basing thing, don't point figs away from the viewer, like when you're looking front on. This is sort of a thing I did a couple of times as well before I realized it. Like, I understand he's supposed to be like cowing this guy, I suspect, but move him to the side doing that or something so that the viewer can actually see both of your piece at once. Just kind of a general thing. Now, as to the skin tone, I mean, yeah, it's rough. And when it comes to a machine like this, like I've painted up a couple soul grinders in my time. Uh, I mean, it's rough because this guy has weird skin texture. But again, what we need to get to here is understanding a more volumetric highlighting with it, right? So you've got this red to black, but he doesn't feel natural in any way because we're starting at three and we just go three, four, five. The red doesn't actually have any highlights. It just has mid-tone to shadows, right? So that'd be number one, you know, follow those volumes and integrate highlights. One of the things you can do with red is again, integrate something like sunny skin tone. That's going to make it feel like a living fleshy thing, right? And it'll give you a naturalistic highlight that won't turn it pink in any egregious way. Um, the other thing I noticed is just there's some areas where the paint just isn't fully applied and that's because you're using red probably over black. So like here, I, I, it feels like we've still got some paint cleanliness issues that we need to focus in on and really make sure that we've got that. So like separation of the elements, making sure things are all, like the paint is only getting where it should. There was a couple of times in here where I noticed paint being in places where it shouldn't. So working on like paint cleanliness and paint application and, and getting a good base coat down for stuff like that. Okay. You know, with the metals, um, you want to be focusing in on, on achieving that transitions in the metals of taking control of the light um, they really feel quite dull and i don't know what's you know we don't have the edges picked out we don't have areas that are more reflective so we want to smooth that out and then you can also chip it and weather it and stuff like that that's fine but you want to make sure you're taking control of that so i hope that helps damien um but yeah i mean my number one thing is to be more contrast paint control and the integration of your highlights and getting down nice smooth clean applications of the paint Okay, uh, Merced, uh, general feedback across the whole model to a high tabletop standard. Sure. Uh, how to make the statue in the black robes more visually interesting as well as the gold on the statue. So we're actually going to look at these pictures here. Now, again, if we're talking high tabletop, honestly, I think you're probably fine. But, you know, I don't, I don't know that you need to go much farther. But to answer your specific questions, um, because again, I mean, if you're going to do like 50 or 60 sisters in this in this sort of a style, yeah, it works for me. It's a bit strange that the colors are so separate between the banner and her. I would generally not like that too much because they feel so very different. Like this fig is under a completely different light than this fig. These, these two are not standing in the same environment. Okay, that's a problem. Your highlights here have nothing to do with her highlights there. Like this fig is in cold, bright uh winter like sun this is in like a warm torch light that's too distinct okay now but i mean this is the only one that's gonna have that banner in the whole army so i don't think that really matters um now let's talk about the cloak with black i mean if you want to make it more interesting that means more contrast or texture it's one of the two uh go back and watch the video i mentioned earlier of doing textured cloaks um but i did it on my chaos warriors it was in i think like the 230s um, that's a method that you can do. It is time consuming, but it will make, it will still look black, but it will look really interesting. So that's one way to go. Um, and then, I mean, that would be probably my biggest piece of advice. You can also just layer in some gray or something like that, or some gray blue, integrate a color, you know, maybe a gray blue, maybe a light purple, maybe a, maybe working in like a sunny skin tone, any of these things would work. And then just do some soft black glazes over to smooth everything out and bring it back in. Okay. Now, as far as the true metallic gold on the statue and on the armor, pop more. I mean, the answer there is we need more contrast of value. Like you have bright, shiny, reflective silver and gold, but we have no shadows. What's brighter? All, a completely white screen or a big white square in the middle of a black screen? Obviously the second one, right? It's going to stand out more to your eye. Why contrast? Name of the game. So, you know, again, go back and watch my how to highlight true metallic metal in a non-metallic fashion as i mentioned a couple times and that's what's going to take you up to the next level with that okay all right newt uh i've been started painting this year first go at skin and hair plus my first attempt at simple freehand on the trousers um sure 
Uh, okay, so well, welcome as you're very new. I mean, again, I think you're you're doing a good job on the skin. So, and you're you're pushing things. You're pushing for contrast. I think the stripes and the trousers work. You gotta we gotta we need to clean up those lines just a little bit by going back with the white. But yeah, I mean, you're in a good place for just starting out. If this is your first attempt at this kind of stuff, it's looking really nice. My best advice is keep pushing the contrast. You know, I paint Gotrek and his skin in a video. Go back and watch that video. Really look at how I'm shaping the volumes, applying the contrast and working it out. Same with the hair, right? Like it needs a little bit more deep contrast and shadow down by his head. It needs to have a little bit more control overall of the colors and the tones. And that's just stuff you're gonna learn over time. It seems like even for just starting out, you've got good brush control. I see really clean applications of paint, um, pretty decent separation of elements. So really at this point, it's just getting in those reps um, working on those, those pushing that contrast and then blending it back together. So, but overall, very cool. I dig them. I think you did a nice job. All right, next up, Brandon, uh, starting an Iron Warriors army. Um, again, still whip. Talked about whip, but okay. Uh, this month, here we go. Um, so, uh, he said, you know, there's things you can do to add more contrast. That's cool. But he's looking for more of a troop to squad tabletop standard. I get it. The hazard striping is taking a while and the trim takes forever. Um, yeah, I mean, welcome to chaos. <laughs> I, I hate to say it. Chaos models take a long time to paint because of all this stupid edging stuff on their army. And yes, like if you're going to do Iron Warriors, that means hazard stripes. And honestly, your hazard stripes look quite nice. Um, if you're doing those in 15 minutes, you should be celebrating. That's great work in 15 minutes. Uh, I would not complain about that at all. Like, so here is my number one advice for you. you. It sounds like you said you've got some things to do the contrast and you're gonna do a little bit of pigment powder and stuff like that. Fantastic. Honestly, if what you're going for is tabletop standard, I think you've nailed it. Be here. This is right. Okay. So I'm going to tell you instead of, instead of working on something on the mini, I think you've got the mini where it should be. Okay. For, for painting a tabletop iron warrior. Um, again, I think the, in my mind, I'm adding the pigments and the other things you mentioned. What you're going to work on is your endurance muscle. 15 minutes is not a lot of time on a detail like that. Okay. Um, you know, like here's a figure I'm painting right now. This thing on his back, this was five hours of work on just the gray metal. Okay. <laughs> so not, I'm not talking about the whole figure. I'm talking about this tank these tanks okay so like what you by my here's my thing i mean this is gonna be an unusual one but here's what you would work on your endurance muscle it's a it is an important thing to build and if you're gonna get through a bunch of these guys you gotta build that muscle up and doing those things like those hazard stripes is gonna be really beneficial because it'll really help you with your, your pain control and your application like getting in those reps and that muscle memory is really beneficial don't think of it like a cost think of it just like going to the gym right? Like this is your leg a day. It sucks, but it's important. You can't skip it. Uh, and, and this is what's going to help you build the strong foundation to build everything else on. Okay. So overall, I think you nailed a great scheme. Keep going with it. Keep doing it. Work on that endurance. Okay. Jim Norfolk. Uh, so general dislikes and likes on this and asking about the cat lighting the ground on fire. Okay. So I'll be honest with you. My least favorite thing here is the cat lighting the ground on fire. Um, one, I don't love this orange edge to this. Okay, that I don't know why this part's hot. I, I only this edge should be hot, I guess, as it's putting the ground out. But honestly, I feel like that's all just distracting. I'm gonna be honest with you completely. I don't love it. It neat trick at something, you know, neat try at something, but it just doesn't. It's not. It doesn't sell for me. Okay, now. The, the real reason I'm, I'm sad about it is because it detracts from an otherwise gorgeous model. Um, I think you've nailed it with this. Orange and blue, classic, fantastic color combination. Great tonal variation on the horns. The orange feels very natural. Love the move from the yellowish orange into the deep tones. The blue has some really nice travel in it. The metal, I love what you're doing there with, uh, with that and, and having some control of that light. That's working for me. So, yeah, I mean, I think the model itself I quite like. We could do a little bit more with some hashing to pick out the hairs of some of this stuff. Like, especially in the main is what I mean in, the, in this area here. Um, but beyond that, I think this thing looks great. 
Uh, it's really just the fire feet that don't work for me, man. Um, but the rest I call an overwhelming success. So, yeah, cool stuff. Love, I love this model. I love what you did with it. Okay, Tom, uh, same as last month, two things you like in two areas for improvement. Um, sure. Uh, so, let's take a look at this guy. So, I, I like this guy. Um, two things I like. I like what we're going for with the texture on the robe. Uh, I think that's working for me. Um, the, the same with the robe and his, like, um, skull cap, I guess, or whatever, whatever this thing is. That actually really works. I like the skull cap the best. Um, because I love the colors you're traveling through here. I really, really like that. Uh, that's working for me. Um, the, it doesn't work as well on the helm because it feels too rough. Like, the streaks are too big. I like the colors you're integrating, but the streaks are too big. There's not enough definition around things like the rivets and stuff like that. Um, the amulet doesn't work at all. I don't know if this is supposed to be gold or something. It doesn't feel like that. It just feels like yellow. I'm not sure what this is. So this is this is a real problem for me. Um, the skin is the other thing that I think we need to, to work on for improvement a little bit. Like So I like the tones we're integrating. Blue tones, green tones, and red tones. I'm loving it. What we don't have is the highlights and things like that that are really popping it up. So everything that's just skin feels very much like it's in the same Caucasian skin tone. Like all of this... All of this, all of this, all of this, all of this feels very samey. I'm loving the variation of hue. You are nailing that. That is great, my man. This, like, green-blue tone you're using and the shadows and the red under the eyes, I love it. I'm going to be a thousand percent clear. It is fantastic. It makes this dude feel, like, sickly and weird and kind of off. But I feel like with the skin tone itself, in that tone, we don't have enough travel of value. Okay? So, there you go. Hope that helps. Okay. Cole, feedback on his chipping using a combination of sponge stippling and AK Interactive. Also, are the rust grime streaks too subtle? Yes, yeah, so I looked at this one earlier, and here's my answer. Uh, yeah, man, this works. Like, I like this weathering quite a bit. I think you did it to exactly the right amount. I actually quite dig this. Um, no, I don't think the streaks are too subtle. I think they actually look quite perfect. Could you do them heavier? Sure. If you wanted them to be heavier, you could. Could you do more chipping and, and stuff like that? Sure, if you wanted to. But no, this amount works for me. It's focused toward the edges. We've got nice streaks coming off of rivets. We've got some there that's sort of damaged in areas I would absolutely expect, like near the doors and stuff like that, uh, or near, near the front where things are scraping by. Lots of good variation of size and chips and directionality uh nah man i've got no pushback it works well done like yeah great <laughs> I just, I, i've got nothing you did good so there you go okay finally sang uh mephiston for for a friend's birthday thank you in advance for improvement suggestions sure uh so um with this guy i mean i think the biggest opportunity saying i see here is that the red doesn't have enough travel like, by that, what I mean is there's just not enough contrast in the red. Um, I also don't love the blonde hair tone. That feels a bit too too yellowy. A lot of things feel a bit too saturated yellowy on here. So, but the hair especially, and then... Uh, but the red is what really strikes me. So, like, if the hair was more desaturated, had a little bit more sepia tones in it, and the red had a lot more travel, go and look at uh, Angel Geraldez's video he did of Mephiston. Great contrast in that one. He's nailing it. That I think he did red as well. So, because I think he did the classic colors. I'm pretty sure this guy's classically in his cloak is in red. I think so. Um, so go take a look at that, and that'll really tell you, show you, and hone in on exactly what I'm talking about. But overall, cool application. I think the part of this that does work for me quite well is um, I like the face, and I like the black cloak. So yeah, nice little just soft, subtle variation on that. That brings us to the end of the month. So with that, I will say thank you to everybody who submitted. Uh, great month, great submissions. I am going to remind everybody one more time, please take good photos. They're your minis. You've spent so much work on them. I want to review them. Don't give me a bad photo. That doesn't do either of us any service. Uh, also, finished models only, and please be specific. Don't write me a novel. Tell me what you want feedback on. Uh, but this is great. There was so much cool stuff this month. I really appreciate it all. Thank you to everybody who submitted. Um, really, really awesome stuff this month. I it was one of the things that thrilled me so much this month was to see 
all the first time submitters. I thought that was really honestly fantastic. Um, I love people stepping up and you know putting themselves out there to get feedback. It can be rough. And when I'm moving quick and I'm critiquing out there, I know some of the stuff can seem pretty harsh. I Please don't take it that way. I'm only trying to offer the feedback that, that, uh, that I want you to hear. And it's all meant with love and to help you take the next step on your hobby journey. Every one of you submitted is awesome. You are brave. You are all hobbyists. I admire and I thank you so much for doing it. Uh, absolutely wonderful. So just take better photos. Uh, but thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate it. For all of you in the community, remember the PMP is a great community because we are all positive hobbyists that are focused on helping all of our hobby brothers and sisters take their next steps. So when you see something posted you like, drop in there, give it a like, comment, and say, hey, this looks awesome. You can change the trajectory of someone's entire day just by giving them a comment. That is an unbelievable power we have to improve the lives of our fellow hobbyists by taking two seconds out of our day to say how much we appreciate their work. I think we underestimate the power we have to improve other people's lives. And that's why I love this community, because it's a community built on sharing, on positivity, and on experiencing this hobby together. So keep answering those questions. Keep offering those, those positive critiques, those celebrations of the hobby. It's wonderful. Uh, so... All of you out there, thank you so much. As I said, if you want to join us in this wonderful hobby community, link is down below. Just remember to ask to answer the questions. But as always, I thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.